शंभ
staying healthy and at home. It's amazing, a whole lot of people are complaining how to stay at home. How to stay at home without conflict <laughs> Well, this is why it's very important for a human being to learn to close their eyes and sit. You don't know any meditation, it doesn't matter. Just close your eyes and sit simply. The purpose of closing your eyes is just this, that if you open your eyes, there are inputs from all the five sense organs, but visual input is the highest input, most impactful in input that human beings have is visual input. Suppose you were a... Today everything is politically sensitive, but suppose you were a dog. We are not using the word dog with any derogatory thing, because there are lots of idiots out there. If you say dog, oh he said dog, he called us dog. Today dogs are very valued, they're taken better care, they get better care than men do. That's how it is. So let's say you were a dog, then you would see your impressions of the world would be more in terms of smell. You… you don't see things as clearly as human beings see, but they smell it out. All the carnivorous animals are like that. If you have ever been in the jungle, you will see they want to know something, they put their nose up. They don't try to look because their vision is not as good as their smell. That sense of smell is extremely sensitive and they can smell you out a mile away. They don't have to see you, just by smelling you they know. But with the human being, visual apparatus being the most dominant, closing your eyes and sitting slowly, you will come to a place where if you close your eyes, the world is gone. If this much you do in your life, you will see, you will sail through every kind of situation in life. Life and death is not an issue if you have this much capability that if you close your eyes, the world is gone. That's the idea of closing your eyes. If you put down these shutters, you should not see. Because eye is just a camera, if you put the lens cap, it should not shoot anything. But this closes the eye, it plays the memory, goes on endlessly from what we've already gathered. So this is the torment. Because of this, if you have work, you will have problems, if you have no work, you will have problems. This is uh, a testing time, not because you're at home, testing, testing time because how to pass this situation without getting the nation and the world heavily inflict… Uh, you know, uh, infected by this virus. How to see that it does not inflict a tremendous amount of uh, fatalities in our societies, that is the challenge. There is a lot to do for that. 
But right now, a whole lot of human beings are complaining how to be with the family, how to be at home. When did home become such a terrible place? No, no, it's not about the home. You will see if you close your eyes and sit, it'll be even more terrible. <laughs> That's you <laughs> I really pity the other members of the family. If, uh, <laughs> if you close your eyes and you torture yourself, if you open your eyes, obviously you will be torturing others. <laughs> you close… if your eyes are open, you torture these people. Eyes closed, you torture yourself. You need to understand this. If you sit quietly in one place, what happens in your mind? If you're sincere about this and pay attention to what is happening, or if there is some way to record this and you record this and don't tell anybody it is your mind, give it to some expert, okay, some psychoanalyst or anybody. Anybody who sees this says, will say, this is a madman's mind. This is how most human beings have kept themselves. This is why they have to be compulsively busy with something. If they don't have anything to do, they have to have a hobby. They can't sit in one place. People are collecting old keys, old stamps, old something, I have nothing against all this. But I want you to understand, you're just trying to deal with the conflicts of your mind. Nothing works, you drink, you drug. Well, this is a time where you need to address. Because you didn't do it yourself, the virus and the police are thrashing people back into their homes. In United States, the full army is all over the place. United States army is all over United States in all the cities, putting people back into their homes. So now it's happening forcefully, at least make use of this time to turn inward, to close your eyes and sit. Just understand what is the nature of your mind. Only if you close your eyes you will know, otherwise you keep thinking something is wrong with the world all the time. So what we're doing, this simple mantra, you must understand what we are calling as a mantra is just a certain geometry of sounds, if properly uttered, will… this mantra is particularly <coughs> designed to generate what is called a samat prana. There are five dimensions of pranavayu in the system. Samat prana is that which is in charge of respiratory process and the thought process and it generates heat. Well, the pranavayu is fundamentally in charge of respiration and uh, thought process, but without the fire of samat prana, pranavayu cannot function. So this is why any kind of kriya or pranayam that you do, first thing is to generate some heat, because without generating the ushna, the other dimensions cannot really fly. So, one thing is to generate heat because this will also greatly enhance one's immune system. Let us not think that uh, now I am doing my kriya so I can go out irresponsibly, no. I never said <laughs> your kriya or your mantra is a solution for uh, corona, it is not. It strengthens your system. If you're doing it just now out of fear, it will take four to six weeks for it to really manifest. But if you're regularly doing it, you can feel the difference that how your body is far more resistant compared to many other people. So, this package of the mantra and the Isha Kriya, which will bring balance to your system, uh, I think it's been released, not it? Today is going to be released. Please make use of this wherever you are because, uh, well, life has given us a break. Let us make use of it for our well-being. Let us not spend this in panic and fear. His questions. Namaskaram Sadhguru. The first question is from Lavanya. Sadhguru, two days ago you said that virus doesn't want to kill you and your body is their habitat. A few people who claim 
their intellectuals on Twitter are making fun of this statement out of context. Can you clarify, is this really true that virus doesn't want to cause death? Well, except human beings, no other creature wants to destroy its habitat. It's only human beings who are known to do that. So they also don't do it by intent, unconsciously they do it. Similarly, virus also does it unconsciously. It wants to live in you, but it overdoes its act and you and me might die. Well, I must tell you this, I was uh, seventeen years of age. By then, uh, you know, I… I had measles, I had uh, typhoid and relapse, I had smallpox, See, I have proof on my nose. <laughs> All kinds of things, any, anything and everything uh, young children or boys can get. But through all this, I never really… Uh, it never really put me down. Even when I had uh, r typhoid relapse, running high temperature, I was still playing games and doing things where the only advantage was you didn't have to go to school. So I liked these things, whatever they called it, I really liked it because you didn't have to go to school, you were officially bunking. But when I was seventeen, I got a cholera. But I saw this damn thing. Within two hours after I realized I have this, it just knocked me down cold. Well, I'm like almost unconscious. I hear my mother, my grandmother all crying, oh, we lost the boy, we lost the boy. And uh, my grandmother is feeling my nose, my God, no, the nose has gone cold, he's finished. Everybody's crying and my father is like, he's a doctor, he's trying to do whatever he can. Then two more doctors came and really I was just passing out completely, just within two hours. But uh, by next day evening I sat up, the second day, I got up and started moving out, they said, you cannot move out and they locked me up in the room. But I said, at least let me be on the terrace so that I can move around a little bit. Then they let me be on the terrace. Then this bothered me, some… Till now many things I had, I enjoyed them because they prevented me from going to school. But here this damn whatever, knocked me down in such a way that I almost died. So I wanted to know something. These are not the days of uh, internet and Google, you can just ask. So I went into the school library and uh, inquired with the librarian and uh, she gave me a book on pathogens. I had not heard that word till then because I rarely went to the biology class. So I read through this book, it had various kinds of things and what they do and everything. Then it was bothering me, how is this… this some little thing that I can't even see can take me off like this. Then I came and had a conversation with my father. He was an accomplished doctor. And then he explained many things to me and uh, I said, I don't like this, this damn thing knocked me off almost. What is this? Then he was telling me many things about what these things are that never left me. I even now remember every word that he said and what I read in that book also because this was experiential challenge for me. It was a life-threatening kind of stuff that happened to me. So I was not fearful but it was like being beaten in a hockey match or a cricket match, you know, that's the kind of feeling I have. So, uh, what are pathogens, whether it's bacteria or virus, there are many varieties of them. One thing is, right now for example, corona, 
See, it was living in the animals pretty well without killing any of them. Now it jumped onto the human being and it's still doing the same thing what it was doing in some other animal. But we are not able to withstand and we are collapsing. Well, that also has been clearly established now, most human beings whose immune systems are good, they are recovering. But those who have a weaker immune system are unfortunately becoming victims of this. What does it say? It simply says that it wants to live, but it lives so aggressively that we may die. Well, many scientists are talking about it, but even what I read at that time, I was only seventeen, I want you to remember this. Even then, it was explained, I don't remember the author's name, otherwise I would have quoted this. Uh, <clears throat> even then, they clearly explained that most of the viruses and bacteria which enter us, who are within us right now, who are in many ways assisting our life process, not harming us, they were at one time could have been very harmful, but they understand if they live like that, they will destroy their own habitat. So they will mutate into something milder over a period of time and then learn to live with us. They were living with other animals comfortably, other animals survived comfortably with them, they were also, this is the nature of life, that one inside the other, one inside the other, so many life forms, trillions of life forms are all living enmeshed into each other. We are also that. Trillions of bacteria and virus are living in this right now. But, like for example, if you do a Mantos test, Indians I'm saying, because right now, uh, in the last uh, three, four weeks we are looking who is a foreigner, who is an Indian and uh, not because of any racial discrimination, we want to know where they came from. Did they come from Italy or China? Where did they come from? See, now Italy is ahead of China. Very unfortunate situations. But these… Uh, like for example, if you do Mantos test for Indians, Almost all of us will fail Mantos test. Mantos test is for tuberculosis bacteria. Almost all Indians will fail this test because all of us have substantial amount of tuberculosis bacteria in us, but we don't have tuberculosis as a disease. Well, so they came up with another name, they're calling it primary complex or whatever else that happens in children, but that shows some symptoms. All of us have this bacteria, we will fail the Mantos test, but we have no symptoms of tuberculosis in us because we have learned to live with them, they have learned to live with us. They know if they get… if they live too aggressively as we are living on this planet right now, they know they will leave… they will lose their habitat. So they will mutate themselves to be milder life. So this is not some new rocket science, it's always been there, at least in the last hundred years it's been there. So, these people who claim to be intellectuals, well it looks like they didn't even go to their pre-university because I was in my pre-university at that time when I read this. It was part of our library, so it must have been probably in the textbook also, but I didn't read the textbook. Maybe these intellectuals did not even get to their pre-university. They think the qualification to be on Twitter is that they must have a bird brain. They think that's a qualification to tweet. Well, uh, it's unfortunate, at a time like this, at a time like this, when there is an imminent disaster waiting ahead of us for the nation, for the world, to a point where countries are putting out their armed forces against their own people right now, you need to understand how serious that is. How serious is it that entire United States Army is out there 
to prevent their people from coming on the street. Indian police is out there on the streets, aggressively enforcing it. That's because they realize how serious a matter it is. But even at a time like this, these people cannot stand up and do something useful and positive for somebody around them. All they do is just this rab rubbish. They think they got a doctorate or they became doctors on the Twitter? <laughs> Avian doctors at least they should become. Well, it's very unfortunate, there is a segment of population which doesn't care what happens to people around them, which doesn't care what happens to the nation, it doesn't care what happens to the rest of the humanity, all they have is their own vitriol spilling poison all the time. Well, I hope at least the virus will cure them of this poison. Now these few days, <laughs> these few days of being with themselves, I hope uh, they stand up and do something useful. Please do something, whoever you are, I don't know who they are, whoever you are who's talking this rubbish, please do something useful. What is this problem? I know what is your problem. I don't want to address that now. Right now, there is an imminent disaster. If we do not handle this situation right, we are heading for a major disaster where millions of lives could just get wiped out. When the, such a situation is there, all you can do is this. When I said this is not the time to go about criticizing our healthcare system or our health ministry, this is not the time. This is a time everybody stands up and does something, whatever little positive things we can do in our lives. Because this is not ordinary time. As a generation of people, we have never faced this kind of a situation. Let people understand this. We have never ever faced this kind of a situation. This is a bigger emergency than the wars you have had in your countries. This is a bigger gener emergency than anything that you have known. It can pass off without too much disaster if we behave responsibly and do the necessary positive action. This is what I request them also. It doesn't matter even if the size of their brain is that of a bird. Even birds can contribute, I'm saying. Next question is from Manisha. We have heard that in our culture, there are many ways to boost immunity with the local resources available at home. Could you shed more light on building resistance using home remedies? Well, building up immunity is not going to happen overnight, this we must know. Generally, I believe for a variety of reasons, looking at the lifestyles, looking at the food patterns. I think this must be checked, this must be medically checked. I think southern Indian people are… are having a better immune system than a whole lot of other people in the world, simply because of the food patterns and the practices and the weather and various other aspects. You must understand in a tropical climate, there are more life forms than anywhere else. Including microorganisms, the number and the variety of them is very, very high. So living in this land itself, the system becomes more resilient because we are exposed to these things all the time. That is one aspect. Another thing is food, another thing is lifestyles. All these aspects are there, being farming communities largely. Most of us, if not in this generation, in the previous generation, we've all come from farming communities. So people lived on the land, that itself gave them enormous strength. In most other parts of the world, over eighty percent of the population moved away from farming probably hundred years ago. In India, we've just moved away from the land only in the last twenty-five, thirty years ago. This benefit is still there with us, it will not stay with us if you're Continuing, if everybody starts living in high-rise apartments without being in contact with the ground and start living like lab rats protected from everything, well, our immunity also will go down. But I think we still have this advantage. But right now, what can I do to boost my immunity? 
As I said, it's not an overnight solution, but in a period of time you can do this. Well, let me talk about very common things available. One thing is, uh, I must say this, uh, you know, we are uh, sacred ash people, we are always ash smeared one way or the other. There are different types of ashes, if you know how to use it, I can't go about giving you instructions of this uh, over the <laughs> on the web. But if you learn to use it properly, it helps. Neem is available almost right across the country except in the mountainous places. Daily consumption of neem leaves. Turmeric is anyway available. Now they are making what is called as nano-turmeric where the absorption rate is way higher than the normal turmeric, which also greatly enhances your immune system. If you... if you soak... Uh, the gooseberry or the amla or the nalikai in honey overnight, along with uh, some broken pepper, black pepper or green pepper, Green pepper for... I'm saying for those of you who are in other countries, green pepper does not mean chili. We mean to say raw pepper, the peppercorn, when it's raw, which you might not have seen in most parts of the world. Here it's common for us, it's available. So soak it in honey and every day about three spoons, three times a day. It's... it works best, all these things work best when you're on an empty stomach, that's the first thing that you take. Uh, if you do these things, you can sh see a significant increase in your immune system. I would say in four to eight weeks, one can see significant betterment of one's immune system. There are yogic practices which are hard to teach, but right now just uh, doing a chant and doing Isha Kriya, this will also enhance your uh, immune system. Let this be very clear that this is not treatment for coronavirus, nor is it a prevention. I did my chant, so I go and do irresponsible things, it's not going to work like that. These are things you do over a period of time and strengthen your system, that the next virus that comes, you may be in a little better place to handle, that is if you're there. Yes, don't take this lightly. Do not take this lightly. Right now, it is a challenge for every one of us to stay alive through this period. That's what it means. Do not think it's some remote thing that happens to somebody else in China or Italy. Right now, if we stay through... if you stay alive through the six to eight months, that means we have handled this responsibly. If every one of us stay alive, that means we are good. We have lived consciously and responsibly, that's what it means. This is what, unfortunately, the governments have to enforce by force because a whole lot of people don't seem to realize that this is necessary. And they think... they think this is some fiction. This is not fiction. This is an imminent danger that we need to handle properly. This let's do the chant. Yoga, 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 Shwaraya, Bhuta, 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 Shwaraya, Kala, 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 Shwaraya, Shiva, Shiva, Sarve. Shambhu 